in this money. So I said, okay, that sounds good. I'm all for that. I'm an American. I like to save money also. I mean, I know why Ukraine is getting money. We went over the Budapest memorandum on one of the lines, but I said, we got to dig a little bit deeper. We actually got to see what's going to happen with these proposed tariffs with this mass deportation and how would all of it actually work if it happens and if it can even happen so we'll just just follow me we'll just be on here don't don't be afraid chime in let me know what you're thinking also so we'll start with the mass deportation let me see Let me see. Let me find this video. If a scammer texted you this, my female dog has given birth. Are you interested? That President-elect Donald Trump still sorting out a few senior positions within his upcoming administration. This comes as the former president continues to prep for a widespread deportation operation. Christian Benavides is in Long West Palm Beach, Florida, with new details on how the controversial plan may look. President-elect Donald Trump spent part of the weekend surrounded by supporters at a UFC fight in New York. It was a rare trip from his Florida state where he continues to work on cabinet picks. Trump had been considering transition co-chair Howard Lutnick and hedge fund manager Scott Bessent to lead Treasury. Bessent made his case on Fox and Friends. Under Donald Trump, we could have a golden age for the next four years. We can bring back the manufacturing. We could have energy dominance. Trump is also using social media to play up plans to carry out mass deportations of undocumented immigrants, starting on his first day. Trump posted that his mass deportation program will involve declaring a national emergency and using military assets. It's going to be a targeted enforcement operation concentrating on criminals and national security threats first. There are an estimated 11 million undocumented immigrants living in the U.S. Deporting them could cost billions of dollars. Christian Benavides, CBS News, West Palm Beach, Florida. And Holman, the man you heard. All right. So they say it's going to be the golden age. And like I say, man, if they're illegal, you know, if they're seeking asylum, that's one thing. But this administration doesn't care anything about that. But the first thing we see is that they're trying to use the military. Well, that's never going to be able to happen because this right here. The Posse Containment Act explained this law right here pretty much says that you can't use the military on the American people. So that means any generals or any commanders, they can easily say, hey, Trump, we're not going to do that because in the military, yeah, you have direct orders from your commander in chief, but unlawful orders you can't do. This act bears this act bars federal troops from participating in civilian law enforcement, except when expressly authorized by law. This 143 year old law embodies an American tradition that sees military interference in civilian affairs as a threat to both democracy and personal liberty. However, recent events have revealed dangerous gaps in laws coverage that Congress must address. What does it mean? In British and American law, posse con committees is a group of people who are mobilized by the sheriff to suppress lawlessness in the country. In any classic Western film, when a lawman gathers a posse to pursue the outlaws, they are forming a posse. This act is so named because one of the things prohibits it using soldiers rather than civilians in it. So you can't use the military to come in here and police everybody. Now, I know people talk about martial law. Martial law is a little bit different. Now, the reason we're going down this route is because I don't know if you understand how military bases are. Now, the plan for Donald Trump is to set up in deport. They say there's 11 million undocumented. They want to do 1 million illegals a year. How many active duty military members are there?
Now you have your active duty military members. That's what I was. Salute to, to my brothers and sisters in arms. You know, we out here, we getting it. Now there's 1.2 million roughly active duty military members under federal guidance. You know, our commander in chief is the president. But then you have your guard members, you have your reserve members. Now your guard, that's controlled by the state. That's not up under Donald Trump. Donald Trump or whoever the president is, the commander in chief cannot control the guard. So they're trying to do 1 million illegals per year using the military. First of all, that's the whole military. All right. So that's basically, let's just say one for one, 1 million illegals, 1 million active duty members. When you think about your active duty members, just put a one in the chat. Do you know anybody that's on active duty? Put a one in the chat if you know anyone on active duty, not including me, not including me. Cause I ain't on active duty no more. Now, from those active duty members that you know in the military, ask yourself. Now I'm doing uh, I'm doing the balloon on, on on Friday. I'm doing it tomorrow night. I'm doing it tomorrow night because I don't have nothing to do. You know, how it might take like two hours, three hours messing around with y'all. But when you think about your, your active duty members, the people that you know that are serving, they have regular jobs. I was bioenvironmental. Some people are cooks. Some people work finance. Some people are police officers. Some people uh, are mechanics. Some people fly jets. Some people are in submarines. So this is 1.2 million across all branches. Air Force, Army, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard. Do you really think they can just pull, like when you go to a military base, there isn't just 15,000 people sitting around with nothing to do. Every member in the military has a job to do. My job was responding to stuff, water sampling, going out and, and taking different type of samples, whether that's soil, air samples, emergency spills I got to respond to. You got firefighters. Where are they getting these military members from and who the hell is training them? Because Trump said day one, they're going to go out there, use the military. First of all, that's 1.2 million. There's about 300,000 of us overseas. So let's just say in the States, there may be 750,000, if that. Do you really think that these 18 and 19 year olds are about to be going door to door? Hey, are you illegal? Look at how I am. Ben, if y'all knew what I was doing on active duty, do you really think they about to have me going knocking door to door? Really about to, first of all, what did R. Kelly say? I don't know how to hog tie. What am I about to do? Go over there. Hey, you're illegal. Come with me. Man, these military members are not about to be doing that shit. Some people signed up their finance. You think someone in finance is about to be going knocking door to door and arresting people? Who's training these people? Where is this training coming from? We go to basic training. Where are they going to just start you in basic training? They putting you on a, the roundup group. You see what I'm saying? So your job. So what, what exactly are we doing? Because there's no organization. Where are we taking them? We're going to get into all of that. We're going to follow the numbers. We're going to follow the paper trip. But think about it. You could even use yourself. If someone came to your job today, wherever you work and said, you know what you're about to do? You're about to round up some illegals. What do you mean round up some illegals? You can go door to door and not. First of all, how do I know if someone's illegal? Is there, I would say they're not documents, so how can I tell you that they're illegal or not? If I'm walking down the street without my ID and I get picked up, how am I going to prove to you that I'm not illegal if you're just throwing me in the back of a truck or something? But you see what I'm saying? It's like when you think about it, how would this work? It's not going to be able to work. They say they want to do 1 million people per year. Well, let's look at this. Let me see.
So we'll go over to the BBC. Texas offers Trump land for migrant deportation facilities. See, now we're about to get into the money. Not only we're not even going to get on that wall. Somehow there was $18 billion spent on a wall, but only 47 miles. A primary wall was built and 37 secondary wall. So out of the 840 miles of border, there was only 47 miles built and it's been eight years. We're not even going to get to that. But when they set up these camps, not only do they have to go get these migrants, you have to hold them somewhere. You still have to feed them. So there's going to be a lot of money. And let's just say you have one migrant camp with, let's say, 50,000 migrants. It's going to take roughly three to 5,000 soldiers to man that. You're going to have to feed people. You're going to have to have people doing the uh, the surveillance. They're going to have the people that have to secure it. You're going to have to have people doing the paperwork. Who is getting the training for this? You can't just pull people from their base. They got work to do. So we're going to get into how much all this costs. But let's see how much land Texas is giving up. Texas authorities say they are prepared to offer Trump 1,400 acres of land along the U.S.-Mexico border to build detention facilities for undocumented migrants. In a letter, the Texas General Land Office said a plot could, you be, uh, could be used to build facilities for processing, detention, coordination, and of uh, the largest deportation of violent criminals in nation's history. Now, this is originally supposed to be violent criminals, but we also found out that they're going to be taking family members. They're, you don't want to separate the families. All right. They said they're going to take all of them. Trump has repeatedly pledged to deport millions of undocumented migrants and mobilize the National Guard to help carry this out. Now, the National Guard, as I mentioned, <laughs> they go by the state. The National Guard is not about to do this. Those generals are going to be like, nah, unless they want them good old boys. But we're going we're gonna to get into the money and everything because we already kind of have an idea because you remember back in 2018, 2019, there were already camps set up. Uh, his, his plan, however, is likely to face enormous financial and logistic hurdles as well as immediate legal challenges from right groups. The letter published online is sent to Trump in his Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida notes that the owner of the recently purchased land has refused to allow a border wall to be built there and actively blocked law enforcement from accessing it. So the land that they're trying to give up, whoever owns it said, man, I don't want no border wall on my land and y'all not about to come and use my land. Now, it's essentially farmland, so it's flat and easy to build on. We can very easily put up a detention center on there, Texas Land Commissioner Don Beckham said. In an interview with Fox News, which was first reported the offer, the state government in Texas, which launched its own um, unlatillary uh, border security operation after Trump left office, has been broadly supportive of Trump's promises. Let me see. Here we go right here. Now, we're going to be jumping around a little bit, so just follow me. But this is in 2019. This is one of the camps that Trump had put together. Conditions, uh, deterioration, and makeshift camp on the Rio Grande where thousands await U.S. asylum. Now, there was 2,000 people here, and this is just in regular tents and everything. The makeshift shelters are clusters just past the river's edge. A rainbow of tarp colors woven with trash bags held together with stick stones, metal rods have become home to an estimated 2,000 migrants from Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Mexico. Some live here for the months, all of them waiting for decisions on asylum. Now, 
he's trying to get rid of them, get rid of asylum seekers. The issue is these countries aren't letting them back. Countries. Back in 2021, back in 2021, when Trump, I mean, not Trump, but when Biden was trying to make things happen, well, guess what? These countries, they're not accepting them back. Once they leave their country and come to America, they're not taking them back. So Trump thinks that he's going to be able to gather up all of these illegals, put them on a plane and send them back to their country. These countries are saying, no, they left here. We don't want them back. So this plan is already shot in the foot before it even starts. And this is back in 2021. We know these countries aren't doing it. Migrants fleeing countries that refuse to take them back are driving new backlogs in U.S. immigration system. And the White House and Homeland Security officials worry this poses a growing obstacle to balancing humanitarian and national security concerns. Driving the news, U.S. officials at southern border have come across an average of nearly 800, this is in 2021, nearly 800 Venezuelan migrants each day for the past week. So that's what, eight, seven, fifty, six hundred a month? Well, 5,600 a week? more than any other nationality except those from Mexico, according to internal immigration data obtained by Ixos. There are now more Venezuelans in border custody than any other nationality followed closely by Nicaragua, a record 13,400 crossed the border in October. This is in 2021. More than 5,000 Cubans, Brazilians, Venezuelans crossed into dangerous uh, gap into Panama last month on top of more than 17,000 Haitians. What they're saying is, where is that? Overall numbers at the border are far lower than they were earlier this year during the peak of children and families illegally crossing the U.S. Mexican border. But an unprecedented number of migrant adults are coming from countries that make deportation difficult, primarily Venezuela, Cuba, Nicaragua, and Brazil. Listen to this. Cuba and Venezuela are some of the least cooperative countries when it comes to U.S. efforts to return migrants who don't qualify for asylum or other protections. Brazilian, well, Brazil and Nicaragua accept a limited number of deportation flights, but require intensive notice and otherwise make it more difficult for other parts of the world. So what these countries are saying is we're not taking them back. So what are we about to do? And they saying you got to give us intensive, extensive notice. You got to give us months ahead. Like, okay, you got planes coming back. Well, we only want one or two planes. So where are all these people going back that we haven't even got to the money, guys? Mexico also refuses migrants from these countries. Migrants are further uh, complicating the situation by heading towards smaller understaffed border sectors, such as the Del Rio, Texas, Yuma, Arizona. Where are they going to go? We just going to capture them. We just going to hold on to them. And these countries aren't taking them back. So once we get into the money and we figure out this, because they say that this is roughly going to be 60 to $80 billion per 1 million migrants. Now, I'm not the best at math. 80, let's just say uh, we're just going to take the low end. We'll say $60 billion. $60 billion per 1 million migrants or illegals. $60 billion times 11. $666 billion. And they're worried about the $100 billion that we're sending to Ukraine. 
make it make sense. But we haven't got that far yet. We're still trying to figure out how is this roundup going to work? Now he's sending back. As of right now, it just sounds like Latin and Haitians are who's getting sent back. I mean, because you got you got illegal Ukrainians here, you got illegal Russians here. But there's there's no real there's no real actual plan put in place. Do I believe the illegals need to leave? Yeah, this is America. But how are we going to do it? You know what I mean? There's really no there's no way that we can do this. So let's let's follow the numbers. How much Now his wife, she's legal now. She's been married long enough. Uh, let's see. We can follow the numbers. This is where you know, this is where I'm at. This is where I'm at right here. The lawsuit against U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement seeking information on how quickly the agency can remove people from the country. The lawsuit comes after President-elect Trump confirmed he plans to declare a national emergency and use military assets to conduct what he says will be the largest mass deportation effort in American history. Two sources familiar with the planning tell NBC News the incoming administration is talking to private prison companies about expanding immigrant detention centers and considering restarting family detention. Incoming Trump border czar Tom Homan says he'll meet with Trump this week, giving us this preview of their plan. As far as the deportation operation, we will prioritize public safety threats and national security threats because they're the biggest, they pose the biggest mm -hmm. danger to, to the United States. We're going to take the handcuffs off ICE. ICE knows who they're looking for. Mm -hmm. They just haven't been able to go arrest them because Secretary Mayorkas has told them you know, to, to uh, tone down the arrest. How would ICE know who to look for if they're illegal and undocumented, if they're undocumented, that means they're unaccounted for. So how would ICE know who they're looking for? Unless it's some people, unless they're looking at the people that have been violating, they may have not updated their green card or anything of that nature. But how are they going to be able to find these 11 million illegals if they're undocumented? I know some people are saying, here's an example. I have a guy that I know. It's a white guy. And he said, if I'm making $15 and an illegal is making $15, and they're coming to the illegals and saying, hey, here's a house, here's a stipend to eat, here's a car, how do you think I'm going to feel? And I had to ask him, I said, if they're making $15 an hour and you're making $15 an hour, that means they're not illegal. That means they're on documentation to be getting paid because if they were illegal, they'd be getting paid less than you. So what exactly are you talking about? You know, the reason you, all these people that want to get rid of these illegals that are the big people behind it, oh, we got to get rid of the illegals. They're the ones that are paying them under the table, three, four dollars an hour. They're the ones paying them. And the reason they're doing that is because it's cheap labor. The same reason why we outsource all of our stuff. And we got a long evening, guys. We go, we go take an economics class tonight. We got a long evening today. I'm not gonna get too far ahead. But it's just a lot of people just freaking talking. If you work somewhere and there's a person working there with you, that means. Unless they're getting paid less than you, that means they're documented because they're on papers to get that hourly wage that you're getting. 
You think they're paying illegals the same amount? They're illegal. So that means I ain't got to pay you shit, honestly. It's just a whole bunch of dumb shit. But let's continue on with this because we're about to get into the money and we're going to really do a deep dive there. With us now is Cecilia Wang, National Legal Director for the ACLU. Cecilia, thank you for being with us. What is this ACLU lawsuit all about? So thank you, Jose. Um, to the lawsuit that we filed yesterday is one in a series of government transparency lawsuits that we filed to try to find out what the capacity of the government is to uh, deport many, many more people than uh, Trump previously did. Trump has said that he's going to execute the largest domestic deportation operation in US history, no expense spared. So make no mistake about what that means. This will be different in both quantity and kind from the first time around. In order to deport the numbers of people that Tom Homan and Steve Miller and Donald Trump are threatening to deport, uh, he has said that he's going to declare a national emergency deploy the National Guard and the U.S. military against civilians, have federal law enforcement agencies drop what they're doing and uh, go to do immigration enforcement, and commandeer local police. You see, they're telling federal agents, federal agents that have better shit to do, stop what you're doing, we're putting you on the roundup. They're taking military members who are defending the country, stop what you're doing, you on roundup duty. Do you not, I'm gonna be honest with you, and you, you can think of me any way you want to. If I was on active duty and they told me, you gotta stop going to work every day, let's just say I was in Georgia, I gotta stop going to work and they sending me up to Atlanta and I gotta round up people. Let me tell you how many people would have been arrested and detained by me. Zero. You think I'm about to risk my life trying to get these? I'm not chasing motherfuckers through the city. Hey, get back here, illegal. I'm not doing that shit. I'm just not doing it. You think these people in the military that you know are about to be out there on roundup duty? Look how they're sitting around. This is how. Let me see something. This is me right here. While we out here, they'll be talking to the migrants. This would be me right here in uniform, just standing back looking like, okay. You think I'm really, hey, y'all get back, man, get back. I'm not doing that shit. This, I didn't sign up to do this. I signed up to serve my country. This is what, what we're just going to be sitting out here. Hey, get back. We ain't got no weapons or nothing. Hell no. Man, these young 18, 19 year olds ain't about to do this shit. Deportation system run. Uh, Cecilia, how do you prepare to fight something that has yet to be implemented? Well, this is exactly how we do it. The first step to fight something that President Trump is going to do once he takes office, probably on day one, is to find out what the government infrastructure is. As I said, this is the third in a series of lawsuits that we have under the Freedom of Information Act to try to find out what is the government infrastructure capacity right now and what are the ways in which Donald Trump is going to exploit that capacity and exceed its bounds in ways that is that are going to violate fundamental civil rights. We saw during his first presidency that um, in the, the deportation infrastructure, uh, he had privately run uh, airport, airplane, air, airline companies uh, deporting immigrants shackled for 48 hours at a time. The government of Colombia refused to take um, people back because they found out that these privately run companies were shackling women and children on deportation flights. As I mentioned earlier, these countries aren't taking them back. You got people shackled for 48 hours. You're putting them on American airline flights to these countries. These countries said, we're not taking them back. You can't land here. So what the airline is going to do? If you know you can't land here, it's like, well, we can't just fly around. We don't have that much gas. So these airlines are going to have to fight back and say, hey, man, they're not letting us fly out there. So that's going to have to turn into, well, we'll have to give buses or whatever. But then Mexico can easily just stop the border and say, no, y'all not doing that shit. We already said we're not taking them back anyway. 
So not only do you have to find out who's illegal, you have to find out what country they came from. How many, one million people, let me ask you, how many people do you think speak Spanish in the military? It ain't many of us. Yeah, I speak a little bit. Hola, como estas? Um, See, si, um, place, uh, origin, Mexico, Venezuela, uh, or Colombia, uh, El Salvador. Like, it's not that many people that speak Spanish, especially not a million people in the military that speak Spanish. So now we got to find out what country they from. If they ain't talking, then what? We just got to send them, hey, well, send him to the side because they ain't. What are we going to do, man? This shit just isn't going to work. It just isn't going to work. And we're going to look at the numbers from what he did the first time. They're talking about this is going to be the largest. I think they only had like 50,000 people, 50,000 immigrants in like 2019, and they could barely even function with that. But let's continue. Um, that's what this lawsuit is aimed at. And the two others we have filed in order to try to find out what the U.S. detention capacity is currently and what the deportation capacity is currently. Step one, find out what Donald Trump is going to do. Step two, predict where he's going to be violating the U.S. laws and people's fundamental civil rights in order to ram a million people a year through the deportation system. One other thing I want to mention. Yeah, yeah, please, please do. Please do. I, I just wanted to mention one other thing. You just played a clip of Tom Homan. Um, saying that they're going to prioritize so-called criminals and national security threats. Well, we have seen what happens, what actually happens when the Trump administration claims to be going after so-called criminals. Make no mistake, Tom Homan and Donald Trump believe that all undocumented immigrants are criminals. <laughs> That's what we were just talking about. How do we know if they're illegal and undocumented, how will we know if they were a criminal when they came from their country of origin if they're undocumented and illegal? That's why they're just saying anyone that isn't documented just automatically becomes a criminal and they're going to be taking away everybody. And there's a, well, I'll try to find it. But there's an interview where they were asking the new guy, the border, uh, whatever the freak his name is. What about separating families? He said, oh, they can all get deported. So if you have an illegal relative that's in your house, they're going to take you with them. So the whole family is going to go. That's their plan because they don't have a plan. There's nothing. There's no documentation. There's no government forms for, OK, we got illegals. You come to the house. OK, what's your name? OK, what country are you from? OK. Were you a criminal before you left there? What, what, what are we doing? You just got to slap handcuffs on them, zip ties, and throw them in the back of a truck, and then take them to one of these little facilities that aren't even built. There's no infrastructure for this. So where is this million people going to go? And are we going to, hey, y'all start in Charlotte, y'all start in Chicago, and then we just round them up and we drive them down to Texas? And then there we're waiting for them to build an infrastructure that we don't have. Man, it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long, this, first of all, this plan isn't going to work. They might, they're going to probably deport like maybe a hundred thousand, 200,000. They're not going to be able to do a million a year, let alone 11 million. Man, we're going we're gonna to get into these numbers. But when he deported these people uh, last time while in office, were those kids ever reunited? We don't know. Remember when he left office, there were still kids in the cages. And, you know, now they're talking about, well, where's the 300,000 missing kids? Uh, they came up missing when you guys started this in 2018. That's the thing, though. This administration and the supporters, they, they just look at. Biden and blame everything on them. Now, am I a big Biden? No, I don't really care about none of that shit. As long as my check come in, <laughs> I don't care what you guys got going on. I moved out the country for a reason. But this all started when you started separating the families. And the crazy thing is, all those people you deported, they just came right back during the pandemic. You may have shipped them out. They came right back. Plus, these countries don't even want them, so they're just sitting in these little camps, man, it's about to get ugly and stupid. But we're going we gonna to be right here. And we will see 
home to home raids by immigration agents and other law enforcement agents and mass work site raids. Um, Donald Trump has said he will spare no expense and will be there to meet him at every step of the way where he's violating people's civil rights in the name of immigration enforcement. And Cecilia, I'm just thinking very quickly on, you know, if, if the president elects uh, plan is one million deportations a year, that certainly outweighs and is, you know, more than twice the amount that President Obama uh, uh, deported during his eight years of the administration. About three million people were deported under the, the, the Obama administration, about 400,000 plus a year. That structure and infrastructure that was created back then for 400,000. Is that still the one that is the basis of the 2024 system? That's right, Jose. And that's why the fundamental problem with Donald Trump's announcement that he's going to run the largest domestic deportation operation in U.S. history, we know that that is going to violate people's fundamental civil rights. We also know it's not he's not only going after undocumented immigrants who are in U.S. communities. In order to deport that number of people, he's going to have to run tent encampments. We saw that happen on a smaller scale in Texas during his first presidency. And the result was uh, journalists documenting that children were suffering from malnutrition and hunger in these U.S. government run tent encampments. Um, people were subjected to sexual abuse. There were COVID-19 outbreaks. This is the kind of thing that Donald Trump is going to have to do in order to ramp up deportation capacity in this drastic way, many times over what the current capacity is. Now, you hear that you haven't heard. You haven't heard any mention of three million people deported in eight years. So that's what Obama did. Eight years, three million people, roughly four hundred thousand people a year. They're trying to double that and do 1 million a year to get rid of 11 million. Well, obviously he's not going to be in office for 11 years. So that definitely isn't going to work. But in 2013, the Obama administration spent nearly $18 billion on immigration enforcement, which was significantly, significantly more than it's spending on all other major federal laws. So in 2013, you know, we got to do it. 2013, $18 billion on immigration enforcement. And they said that this is roughly um, 400000 a year. $2,013, one, Oh, well, there you go. All right, let me can't go over 10 million. All right, give me a second. We have to do this. Right about 10 million. It's 1800. All right. Hundred thousand ten million ten million dollars in twenty thirteen is thirteen million seven hundred and seven right now times that. So just for, in 2024, for 400,000 deportees, this is just rough estimates. They said he was doing about 400,000 people. 2018, 2013, he spent uh, $18 billion. In 2024, it cost $24 billion for 400,000. So 24. Uh, for 400,000, 1 million divided by 400,000. It's 2.5 times 
24 billion dollars 61 billion dollars for roughly a million people and that's just what they're spending this isn't building new infrastructure from nowhere this isn't using the military this isn't taking federal agents and putting them out because you know there's a lot of money that's going to be spent this is basically like a um like for military members this would be like a deployment slash a tdy now you're gonna have to pay for housing for that you have to pay them food travel vouchers there's going to be a lot of money spent now when it goes to to a deployment in i want to say 2003 a deployment for one soldier in afghanistan for one year is a million dollars these are going to be this is a national emergency in the military these are going to be considered deployments so we're looking at just this is just 61 billion dollars for a million people in one year that's not the rounding up this is just for immigration enforcement the 18 billion that they did for 400,000 this hasn't even got into everything where she was bringing up violating rights so all right we have 61 billion dollars right now just off the back that we would have to spend one year 61 billion dollars that's where we're at right there yeah, well where was that was it? all right now here we go ha tenido un accidente Comuníquese con las oficinas legales de Brandon J. So we've been talking throughout the show about the president-elect picking key members of his immigration. Remember, that $61 billion is just immigration enforcement. It's not for actual deportation, guys. So remember that. That's just a rough estimate of what they spent on just enforcement for 400,000 people in a year. All right? So 2.5 times that, we come up with $61 billion just for enforcement. This means hiring new people. This means getting new trucks. This isn't even the deportation part yet. This is just for enforcement. This is getting the federal agents to come in. This is hiring. This is training. This hasn't even started deportation. We're already at $60 billion. All right. <laughs> no, they didn't read the small print. And like I said, all I'm giving you guys is facts based off of prior information and knowledge going forward. You know what I mean? This is all we're doing. I'm not making any of this up. It is a fact that 13 billion was well, 18 billion was spent in 2013, which is 24 billion in today's currency. And that was for 400,000 people. We're talking 2.5 times that. All right. With the inflation, we don't even know what inflation is going to be like in 2025 yet because we just got inflation down to 2.9, which is the, the regular inflation rate that goes up every year. There's always going to be inflation. Don't let anyone tell you that. Oh man, it, it was cheaper. I was talking to, I was talking to somebody and they were like, man, a box of cereal was $7. Do you know when I was growing up, a box of cereal was like $2 every year shit goes up. It just goes up. It's just the way life is. You know, when my dad was driving cars, when he first started driving, he said gas was like 20 cents a gallon. When I first started driving car, I used to pay a dollar ten for gas per gallon. Your boy used to give you five dollars, and that was good. We could ride all day, five dollars, ten dollars. It's gonna go up every single year. That's life. It's called the cost of living. That's what that is. So there's always gonna be inflation. Now, did it spike? Yeah, it spiked, but that was after it dropped in 2020 because of the mishandling of the pandemic where we had a bounce back up because remember the stimmy that was sent out but it wasn't from trump it was actually from congress who was looking out for the people because trump actually didn't want to get at but since he wanted to take credit for it inflation shot up from there so we finally got inflation back down to the 2.9 this is actually the lowest it's been since the pandemic so we're right back on track shit just gets more expensive just because that's the way life is but Remember that 61 billion. Let me write that down. 61 billion is just immigration enforcement. It is not deportation. 61 bill. Immigration team. I started driving. Uh, I got my permit in. 
oh three two i got my permit in 2001 yeah i got my permit before 9 11. making plans to fulfill what was a key campaign promise for him this this idea of mass deportations of illegal immigrants now still a lot of questions about those plans how it all plays out including how they will be paid for and the potential economic impact important u.s industries do depend heavily on immigrant workers so whether it's construction hospitality agriculture or others we want to talk about that side of it with nana gupta right now the uh, policy director at the american immigration council favors expanding immigration reforming the system thanks for joining us i think we have numbers from um from your organization that do estimate cost right which has been one of the things people have brought up and you're uh, like 88 billion a year so the 10-year cost is 967 So they're coming up with 88 billion. Now this is this is them actually going into the deportation. Remember, the 61 billion that we calculated for 1 million people, that's just for enforcement. That, that's just the money that we got to spend to even get started. It was 18 billion for 400,000 in 2013, which is 24 million now, 24 billion now, but remember, we going we trying to do a million so they're saying it's going to be $88 billion a year, basically a trillion dollars in 10 years for this. Now, I'm pretty sure this is just all a rough estimate. They haven't put inflation in because in 10 years, shit's going to be even higher than it is now because that's just the way life is. So this is going to be well over a trillion dollars if this shit was to go through. But let's continue on. 7.9 billion. So this is something I don't know how much we thought about it before, but people will be talking about it now. Talk talk more to us about cost. Yeah, uh, thanks so much for having me. I think um, it's important for the American people to understand uh, that mass deportation, as it's being talked about by President-elect Trump and his administration, would inflict harm and suffering not only on immigrant communities, um, but would impact all of us. A recent report, um, as you mentioned, from my organization makes clear that mass deportation would essentially crater our economy. So this isn't a matter of immigration policy. It's really an economic proposal that would cause many major industries to utterly collapse. And so to just take a step back, the reason for that, right, is that we have, you know, one in eight people in this country um, is an immigrant. And together, immigrants control contribute over $570 billion in taxes a year. Um, $570 billion in taxes a year. That's immigrants. It's not illegals. That's the actual immigrants. For $570 billion in taxes a year. Um, something a lot of Americans don't know is that undocumented people contribute $47 billion in taxes every year. They pay right. taxes. And, and for those other numbers, you hear that? Legal immigrants pay five hundred billion in taxes. Illegal, according to their numbers, pay roughly four hundred billion in taxes. You're probably saying, "Mo, how are they paying taxes?" Because when you go to the store and buy something, there's a tax on it. So these illegals are still paying taxes. Are they paying income tax? No. Are they got W-2s? No. But the taxes that they pay when they go and buy consumer goods, they pay the taxes on that. And they contribute almost $500 billion a year also. So all this, they ain't paying their taxes. Yeah, they're not paying their taxes, but they also ain't making what you make it. They're out there. Oh, don't worry about it. We're going to Florida. We're going to Florida. We're going to Florida and we're going to talk numbers. Oh, yeah, this is on a global scale. I told you. <laughs> We follow in the paper trail tonight. First, just to clarify, are you talking about immigrants overall? The first numbers you cited are undocumented immigrants. So the first number over $570 billion is of all immigrants and 47 billion a year comes from undocumented immigrants who don't have lawful status, but are still paying taxes. And that okay. doesn't of course take into account the various industries, as you mentioned, that immigrants fill. Yeah, so let me we put know. those up on the screen now so we can talk through some of them and you can expand on this. So you, you have the list of in industries. So uh, here it is, one in eight construction workers, one in eight agriculture workers, one in four of the hospitality industry. So to go back again, this. All right. 
So we got us some numbers. So at the construction site, one in eight workers will be lost due to mass deportation, which is 30% in the major trades. You know, that's carpentry. You know what I'm saying? That's putting up the walls and everything, concrete. That's, um, well, I was going to say landscaping, that goes in agriculture. So there go 30%. Agriculture, one in eight. 28% of those are gardeners and shorters. <laughs> hey, man, I need a, I ain't going to lie to you. I need my apples. I need my oranges now. I need my strawberries. I need my grapes now. We can't get rid of the grape pickers. You feel me? I need, I need my fruit now. I need my fruit. You talking about one in eight. That's 28%. So that means 70% of the people going to be working. That means 30% is gone. Man, I know Kendall need her grapefruit. Kendall need her cherries. Kendall ain't trying to go without them cherries. It's that time of the year, too. I need them cherries. Hospitality, one in 14 workers. Remember, we just had a strike in Las Vegas about this. That's including 25% of housekeeping. Now, how many people are, let me ask you something. How many people you know getting up in the morning, you know what, I need a job today. Man, where's all the jobs at? Unemployment is so damn high, but wait a minute. You can go take your ass out in the field and go get some apples out the tree. You can go get me some grapes. You can go pick some strawberries. There's a job out there. Oh, you can go to the local hotel. And you can go work in there, do the do the laundry, fold clothes. Laundry. There's jobs out there with all with all of these migrants, illegals being being stripped from where they at. I want to see all the people on unemployment, especially them white folk that want these illegals out. Of, I want to see all you motherfuckers lined up. I want to see you out there. I'm cutting grass today, baby. I want to see y'all lined up out there in that motherfucking heat. I want to see you out there ready to go. I want to make, I better not have a shortage. I like green grapes. I love me some green grapes. I get green grapes. I take them. I pick them off the vine. I put them in a nice little bowl. I rinse them off real good. <laughs> rinse them off. Get the strainer out. Put them in the strainer. Rinse them again. Put them back in the bowl. And what I do is while they wet a little bit, I stick them in the freezer for a little, little 10 to 15 minutes so it can get a little, a little, you know, just a little freeze, a little, a little froze on. No, that's why I'm gonna call it a froze on. And then I take them out that freezer in that bowl and then I eat them and ooh. It better not be no motherfucking shortage on my grapes. Y'all get these illegals out of here. I better see you white folk out there getting my motherfucking grapes. That's what I better see. Don't don't tell me that there's a shortage on grapes now. I better not see no shortage on grapes. We getting rid of these illegals. Y'all talking about there ain't no jobs, even though Biden brought the most jobs to America in history. But y'all talking about there ain't no jobs. I better see your ass out there sweating. I don't want to hear no break. Can I take a break? Hell no. Get your ass out there. I want my motherfucking grapes now. And when I go to the hotel, I better have clean sheets. Because Miss Marie will be coming in there checking on your boy. Oh, sorry. Oh, don't worry about it, Miss Maria. I'm about to leave. You can go ahead and take those. Oh, I'll take new towels, please, Miss Maria. Oh, yeah. And then when I leave the hotel, I drop a little 20 piece on the dresser for her. Thank you for cleaning up my spot. I better see y'all lined up and them motherfucking beds better be spotless. I don't want no wrinkles in my sheets now. When you get in there, I don't want no. And you better have enough towels. I like to put a towel down on the floor so I can put my feet on it while I'm using that. That toilet better be clean, too. I better not lift that toilet seat up and see some yellow up on it. I put a towel right there. I put a towel in front of the the the, the, uh, the sink. I like to stand on that. I put a towel in front of the shower. I like to stand on that. And I better have three, four dry towels in there. because Every time I hop in the shower, I'm putting on a new towel. Yeah. Y'all better be lining up for it. Yeah. Y'all better be lining up for it. When the last time you seen a white gentleman, you ain't. But let's continue on. We getting rid of these illegals. You you start to think, wait a minute, that's starting to really affect us. Wait. This would be through mass deportations of undocumented workers, or you're looking to get these numbers at immigrants overall for these numbers. So we're looking at both because okay. we've heard threats in the mass deportation campaign of both folks with legal status and those without. So due to the loss of workers across U.S. industries, we found in our report 
that mass deportation of immigrants, whether with some status or not, would likely reduce the U.S. GDP by 4.2 to 6.8 percent. And that's because immigrants, again. Wait, I know this ain't the wall that Trump built. This ain't the wall that we wasted eighteen billion dollars on. Oh yeah, we gonna go and <laughs> we gonna go and break down the numbers of how much money was spent on this forty-seven miles that they built in eight fucking years. Yeah, you talk about money being wasted. We gonna talk about this wall that was allegedly built. And hey, look what they doing to this wall that was built. And both with status and undocumented, fill a range of. Look at this dude flipping off the news. <laughs> Look at this dude flipping off the news. Imagine I'm out here. I got my gear on. Hey, get out of here, illegals. And there's a dude flipping me off. Man, you know what? Y'all got it. Y'all got it, man. Y'all really going through all of this. Y'all done pulled a motherfucking steel part of the fence out the way. Y'all got it, man. Think about it. Your little cousins that are just now getting in the military, they're sending them out there. And their job is to stop these people. We don't have that. Let's be honest. Yeah, we don't want illegals here if they're going to be doing illegal shit and committing crime. But we don't have that much hate in our heart that we're actually going to be chasing someone down and tackling them. I'm not doing it. I'm telling you like that. And I know thousands of people in the military. They're not doing that. They're just not doing it. You got to get some of them proud boys that, oh, I got to get them out. Those are going to be the only people that really are going to be enthusiastic to go out and chase these people down. You think I'm about to be in the desert chasing after a motherfucker? You out your mind. Hey, you got it, brother. Have at it. <laughs> I'm not going out there. Y'all better go look behind them damn cactus. Man, I'm not doing that shit. Sectors of the labor force, right? From the service industry to high tech. 23% of STEM workers are immigrants. 27% of health aid workers are foreign born. Um, so whether this administration goes after only undocumented people or other non-citizen immigrants, we would expect seismic impacts on the U.S. economy. How, mu how much is the difference? I, I'm sorry to harp on this point too much, but just say for argument's sake that they don't go, that they do go after only undocumented immigrants. So that's what this program is targeted towards when we get the details. Is it still a large economic impact yes. and risk. Still a big yes, risk. Right. Yeah. So first of all, there are 11 million undocumented people living in the U.S., many of whom have lived here for years, decades upon decades. As I mentioned, they pay taxes annually. Many of them live in mixed status families, raising U.S. citizen children, running their own businesses. They're the ones who fill sectors, like I said, you know, healthcare aid, agriculture, service industry, and losing that labor force um mm -hmm. have a number of people as high real as quick Nina, before we go because we're up against the clock do you have a counter proposal is there something different that should be done or status quo N no absolutely not right it's absolutely possible to enforce civil immigration law it's a civil system something like the tax system right without punitive harsh consequences that undermine the u.s economy Nana gupta thank you again these are all right so what we're going to do we're going to head on over to florida I don't know if you guys remember this or not. I do, because I was in California when it happened. Uh, Where's it at? Where's it at? I know there's a number. Florida's economy. So in 2023, will this one show it? In 2023, if you remember, Ron DeSantis is it at? Ron DeSantis decided 
any illegal truck drivers down there could no longer drive in the state of Florida. Well, after they got rid of all the illegal drivers in, well, not all of them, but they started to crack down on illegal drivers driving any of the semis down in Florida. Did you know in the year 2023, Florida alone lost $12 billion in the economy for not having illegals drive in the state? So, How much does Florida? Oh, no, no, no. How much is it? So Florida's economy contributes 5.82% of the U.S. gross domestic product. That's the GDP. Now they lost. Over on NPR.org, a year later, Florida businesses say that the state immigration law dealt a huge blow. Uh, blah, 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 man. We're not about to go out. SB 1718 punishes employers who use undocumented labor and forbids undocumented people from having a driver's license. Many Florida businesses say that the new law has led to workers leaving the state, hurting their bottom line. A lot of people are scared, says Sanchez. Um, a lot of people went north and never came back. The federal government estimates that a nationwide over 40% of the farmers are undocumented. So... If 40% of the, the farm workers are undocumented, let's just see. Sanchez, Sanchez says the effect in the law was immediate. Families he'd worked with for 20 to 30 years were gone from one day to the next. The government doesn't seem to care, he says. Maybe they think the crops are going to pick themselves. I just told you, get your ass out there and get my grapes. The Florida, the Florida Policy Institute estimates that this immigration law could cost the state economy $12 billion in the first year. That's not counting the loss of tax revenue. So... $12 billion from not having illegals drive down there and they can't work on the farm. So if they're losing $12 billion and 40% of them are uh, undocumented, let me see, $203 billion times 0.40%. Eighty one billion. Eighty one billion. Out of the two hundred and three billion that farmers bring in each year is going to be cut. Eighty one billion dollars per year with 40 percent cut. That's the undocumented right there. That's what they bring in. The undocumented by itself are almost bringing in half of what all the farmers bring into the United States. So once we start removing them, we see that Florida is already getting hit with 12 billion, not including taxes. So roughly 20 billion dollars a year. That's just Florida. We haven't even got to the bigger states, California, Texas, what they got out there, the Midwestern state with corn. So. Removing. All of these illegals, we're going to see a shortage in everything. And with a shortage in everything, what does that mean? Supply and demand. If there's less of a 
if there's less of a supply, the demand is going to go up. So with that being said, be prepared. Be prepared to spend out the ass. Florida is already getting hit with it. Let's get back to the article, though, because it's not me talking. This is actually people in Florida. A spokesperson, spokesperson for Florida Governor Ron DeSantis told NPR, Governor DeSantis signed the most ambiguous anti-illegal immigration law in the country to protect Floridians. They also stated that Florida can still maintain a robust economy. Well, Ron Hetrick, a senior economist, a labor market analyst, says the problem is that the state has a serious labor shortage. Now, we just went over the numbers, one in eight in agriculture. Now, down in Florida, it's probably about one in six. That was just countrywide. Well, nationwide is on your side. The Pew Research Center estimates that there are close to one million undocumented people. This is just in Florida. Now, remember, they said they're trying to get rid of 11 million undocumented illegals. There's 1 million of them in Florida. They're losing 12 billion. So let's just say mm, each one is $12 billion. We, we got to do the math. So every 1 million is 12 billion. So we got 11 million. 11 times 12 billion, 100,000 million billion, $132 billion a year. If all 11 million are gone and undocumented. That's what I want to know. If the migrants are deported, who are going to do those jobs for pay? I don't know. I'm waiting because... I'm hearing a lot of people say there are no jobs out here. So there's going to be a lot of jobs open. There's going to be a lot of jobs open. And the reason no one's going to take these jobs is because these undocumented immigrants, they're getting paid $3, $4, $5, maybe on the high end. Some of them actually, what was it? Let me let me show you guys something because you know I, I got all these different things running through my head right now. Let me see. 35 pounds. Uh where's it at? Where's it at? Thirty-five pounds of, not food. Uh, what the hell was it? Is it corn? I'm. A, I'm gonna look it up. Don't worry about it. But we're gonna continue on with Florida though, because this right here is already a sample size of what's going on. Uh, even if it's just a fraction of them were to leave, uh, Hetrick said, how do those cities get built? How do those houses get built? We all know very well how things are built. He says that what well, Florida is facing is symbolic of a larger reality in the country where there is an, an aging population of politicians farming immigrants as a threat rather than fixing a broken system. The future, if you look at the census project for the growth of the country, once this boomer population goes through its next, you know, 15 years without immigration re-shrink. Uh, in 2023, Florida hired thousands more H-2A guest workers than the year, yeah, than the year before. But farmers NPR spoke to said the bureaucracy and the cost of applying for those work permits is crippling. They also have been widespread reports of lack of oversight and exploitation of the H-2A workers. The H-2A system is absolutely broken, Gary says. This is one of the largest strawberry growers in the nation. His field harvesters in Florida are H-2A visas. It's the only means of getting workers at the farm right now. 
but it's totally outdated. Even for a company as large as it is, the cost has become crushing, he says. It has been, it has to pay a recruitment company, visa fees, housing workers, pay for meals and transportation. I was talking to a migrant a couple of weeks ago. He told me he making AK a week doing Uber and with the car program at NYC. Out here, they all got Uber uh, food jobs for AK a week. Now, I mean, I know they are getting money, but shit. Go drive an Uber. If they making all that money, go drive an Uber then. Now, I'd have to see actual documentation of like someone making 8K a week. Before I believe that, you know, I can tell y'all I'm making 8K a week, whether y'all believe it or not is on y'all. But I mean, I know they are getting like little stipends and shit. And we going, trust me, we going up to New York next. We going up to New York. I was just showing that Florida in one year lost $12 billion. And now they got to go through these visas was making things more expensive. So if you got to pay for these visas, you got to pay for houses, you got to pay for transportation on top of you got to give them a fair wage. This is what's going to drive the price through the roof. Now, when you got the illegals, hey, you come to work, we giving you two, three dollars per every 35, 40 pounds. Of food that you collect. Man. But this is what we want, though. Uh, NPR spoke to the construction business owners and restaurants who said Florida's labor shortage combined with the <laughs> the arthritic national immigration policies is hurting the bottom line. Years ago, you put an ad in that newspaper, you'd have a bunch of people fill out applications. You'd have people lined up outside your door, says David, the owner of CFS Roofing Services. But Florida is in the path of hurricanes. Roofing is in a high demand here. In recent years, Fort Myers has been especially hard hit. And Crowther says it's been challenging to find workers at all levels from management to roofers. He said his company lost about 10 percent of its workers after Florida passed the SB 17118 immigration bill in 2023. These workers were scared for safety of their undocumented family members, he says. He says if he could hire more immigrant labor, it would ultimately trickle down into more jobs for American workers. If I knew I could get an unlimited supply of labor, I then would start hiring estimators and salesmen over to start promoting more work. It's a domino effect. Along with the National Roof and Contractors Association has been petitioning for an expansion of the H2B program, which provides temporary non-agriculture visas. He says the business is good, but it could be much better if only he could find more workers. Because guess what? Guess what? Ain't none of you niggas getting up to go do no roofing. Listen. 10% of the workers are gone. Get your ass up and go to Florida and get the roofing. Eric said, uh, now nah, most of these companies just hella picky on who they hire. It's not that they're picky. They're trying to pay less. If you, the American, come to them, there's minimum wage. Americans have rights. The illegals. They're undocumented. I'm paying them money on the table. Let's say for roofing, ease, even numbers, you get $20 an hour. Guess what? I only got to pay this illegal $7 an hour. Or I can say this project here, it's going to be a, a week project to roof this building. I'm going to give you $250. So from a business standpoint, what I pay you, for a week's worth of work, $1,500? Or would I go over here and get this undocumented immigrant and give them $250? You see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's about that bottom line. 
And that's why they're losing $12 billion because those truck drivers that are out there, they driving around with no license. They just in trucks. It's like, shit, I can get this illegal to drive this truck. And you know they get 40 cents a mile. Shit, I give them five cents a mile. <laughs> you get done driving that, we'll get $3,500 for that shipment. We'll give you $250, $300. So it's, it's just it's just the way it is, man. It's just the way it is. I know, man, it's unfortunate, but 